Hello. In the previous video, we started to look at the sampling theorem that help us answer the question of how fast must we sample in order to obtain enough information to reconstruct from the discrete time sa samples the original continuous time signal. Right? And then also how to do that. While initially it may seem that if you go from an infinite number of numbers, continuous time, to a finite set of numbers, at those sample at those measure, sample at those time intervals, that we may lose some information, we find that if we meet two conditions, meaning number one, the signal is band limited, meaning it has a maximum frequency, which you can ensure that by passing it through a pre-filter, or what is called an anti-aliasing filter also, then if we sample slightly higher than twice the maximum frequency, then theoretically we are able to reconstruct it, meaning from those samples, from this set of samples here, we are able to go back and create the, recreate, reconstruct exactly, we'll be able to, here, from this set of samples, recreate exactly the continuous time. So we will be able to, again, from those samples that are finite, these numbers here, recreate perfectly the original signal. Now, in terms of a quick example, you can see, for instance, you see this in CDs. In music, see this, oops. How fast do we sample? See this, sample with a sampling frequency, Fs, of 44.1 kilohertz. Any reason for that? Well, our ability to, uh, uh, the range of frequencies for which we are able to hear our auditory system is 20 hertz to what is the maximum one? 20 kilohertz. So as you can see, the sampling frequency is more than twice the maximum frequency. You are oversampling a little bit that reduces the performance of your, reduces the performance, sorry. You do not have to have such a good post filter later on. It, it makes it easier to reconstruct. So consider sound music. What we are able to hear is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. If you want to store that music, to be able to well store it, replay it, transmit it, or if you want to do any of the audio effects, the first thing that you need to do, since this is a continuous time signal, is going to need to transform it to digital. And as we mentioned, when you are doing that, the most critical step is the step of sampling. If you go ahead and start taking measurements, the issue is that the signal that you may have may have frequencies above the 20 kilohertz. And that's why we are going to ensure that we low pass, pass it through a low pass filter, this pre filter, prior to the analog to digital conversion, in order to make sure that it is band limited, meaning that there is a maximum frequency here. Remember, this is a requirement, maximum frequency. How do you ensure that you have a maximum frequency? Well, you're band limited, and this is what we have here. And so if we cannot hear any more than 20 kilohertz, well, let's make sure that we have a low pass filter so that the signal does not have any high frequency noise above 20 kilohertz so that you meet this requirement. So that then you can sample, in this case, theoretically you could go as low as 40 kilohertz, but that will mean that the reconstruct needs to be very, very high performance. And so if you oversample, meaning sample more than what you need, for the sampling theorem, then it makes the reconstruction easier, and that's why you have 44.1 more than 40, right? So now this explains a couple of videos back why 
prior to the sampling and quantization here in the digital to analog conversion block, what did we do? We had a pre-filter, right? This is the anti-aliasing filter, the pro-filter. What are we doing there? There we are band limiting, ensuring the goal of the filter is to ensure that we have an F max, so that then here when we are sampling, we can do Fs greater than two F max. The higher you make it, the easier then is going to be doing this reconstruction here. Okay, this is that. Right. So number one in the sampling theorem, we need to band limit it. Number two, we sample at twice the maximum frequency. And if that happens, we will be able to reconstruct here, meaning if we didn't do anything in the DSP, if we just this multiply times one, we are able to create a Y of T, which is X of T, and bring it all the way back here. to this one, which is the X of T that is filtered to have a maximum frequency of interest. We are able to reconstruct it exactly. Okay, this is the reconstruction. Now, let me give you a quick introduction to the problem of aliasing. So let's look now at, at what happens if you do not sample fast enough. If you do not sample fast enough, you have a problem. And one of the problems that you have is aliasing. So you think when you hear aliasing, think what is aliasing? Aliasing is a problem. Okay. It's a problem that happens when Fs is less than 2F max, which is going to imply that typically you are not going to be able to reconstruct. Not possible to reconstruct. X of T from X of N. Imagine here, if instead of sampling at this rate, if we have used another sampling interval that was longer, take here one sample, here is my new sample interval, we take this sample, take this sample, this sample, we may not be able to capture this behavior here as an example. So aliasing is a problem that occurs when you undersample, meaning when you do not meet the sampling theorem, when Fs is less than twice the maximum frequency. Maybe because you did not band limit it, so you do not have a maximum frequency. Maybe because you do have a maximum frequency, but this is still less than twice the maximum frequency. It is illustrative to see at what really what happens to the spectrum of these signals, so of sample signals to illustrate aliasing. So if you were to look at here the spectrum at each one of these intervals, you could think about okay, this x of t, x of I'm going to denote this as j omega for the spectrum, the two-sided spectrum. It's a function of omega. Let's imagine that this has a spectrum, something like this. Keeps going. Okay. Once you pre-filter, the objective of this pre-filtering, the spectrum of capital X to denote the spectrum of J omega, the goal here 
is to ensure that we have a maximum frequency. So if this was the original spectrum, we are applying a low pass filter. This is the ideal low pass filter, two sided, so that the spectrum indeed looks something like this. It is band limited, meaning we cut some components here. Components that were not of interest for our application. Think, for instance, if we cannot hear more than 20 kilohertz, it makes no sense to have high frequency components that are more than 20 kilohertz. And so this enables you to have that F, I'm going to say W max, since I did here, or that F max. Okay. Now, once you quantize at this stage, the spectrum of the discrete time signal, you're going to have a spectral replicas. We'll see that in the activities, meaning, or images. If this is how the spectrum look, this spectrum now is going to repeat at fs twice fs, 3fs, minus fs, minus twice fs. You get these spectral replicas. Or these images of the original spectrum. Now what happens with aliasing is, you can, if this is f max, If fx is not greater than 2f max, what happens when it is just equal, exactly equal? Well, they will just touch. This is f max, and now another one comes here, twice f max, so. But if it is less, what happens is that they will overlap. So you have one spectra here, and if this is f max, this sh well should f s should be. If it is here, now what happens is that you will have something like this, and so on, and so you will have correction that is in ordinarily impossible then to do the reconstruction. Now these things are called images or spectral replicas, all of them, let's keep going. This is the reason why in over here, this post field is also called anti-image filter. When, in order to be able to reconstruct, once we do the processing here, or let's imagine that we don't do any processing, we, the objective here of these two elements is to effectively implement a filter whereby if we are able to cut all these images out, this spectrum is the same as the original spectrum. So we capture all the spectral properties and we are able to reconstruct back. Now, we are going to see in future lectures that to implement this ideal filter, rectangular, this is actually quite difficult. In order to do that, and, and that, that filter in the frequency domain, in the time domain, the inverse Fourier transform, we will see, is what gives you that sync function that I was talking about. So for any of this, we will need to be implementing a sync function in the reconstructor and adding them together. And that will add all those things for each one of the samples, when you add them together, you will get x of t. In reality, it is just really implementing a low-pass filter 
So you pick the spectrum back of the original band limited signal. This is the one that we reconstruct. Now, I mentioned before that, or in CD, you see that for CDs, FS is 44.1 kilohertz, the maximum frequency that we are able to hear is 20 kilohertz, therefore you band limited there to 20 kilohertz, and you see that this is more than 40, twice will be 40. That's because it then allows you to do reconstruction without having to have an ideal filter. You can do something like this. As long as you have FS greater, a little bit more greater than twice F max, makes easier the reconstruction. So with that, let's do a couple of activities and these concepts are going to become really clearer. Thank you.